What's up, everybody? Derek Anderson, the DA. All right, so check this out. Loki season two just dropped. You may or may not be aware of that, okay? But it just dropped last Thursday. And uh, you remember on that Echo Base live stream, I said, yeah, I'm going to go and check out Loki season two uh, opening episode, first episode, see if it's any good, see if it's anything worth covering, anything that was a, just an amazing episode. You know, it was all right. Nothing out of the ordinary. No kind of, oh my God, what an amazing episode. It wasn't that at all, you know? Just an all right episode. If you like, like Loki, if you like the MCU, you'll probably enjoy that episode. But then that got me to think, like, okay, what's the buzz? You know, I haven't been hearing a lot of people talking about it. I haven't been seeing a lot of articles about it. You know, I'm always constantly on the lookout for stuff to discuss and nothing. All right. Loki has just been kind of like a nothing burger. It's the it's the buzz that you're concerned about when you see a new episode or a new season of a MCU show or a Star Wars show. Kind of like I was saying with Ahsoka versus One Piece. Like One Piece has all of this buzz and Ahsoka had hardly any buzz, you know? So like, what's the buzz? Because these shows, these shows cost Marvel and Disney a whole lot of money. So are they getting their money's worth, right? In terms of buzz, are people checking for this? Now, I do a YouTube channel, so of course, I'm checking for this, but what about the general audience? That's the question. Is the general audience even caring about this Loki stuff? All right, so I went and I looked on Twitter, and I came across this post. Now, this is from Ryan Airy, and Ryan Airy, you can see here, he's with Screen Crush News. Now, Screen Crush has a very huge YouTube platform, about 1.5 million subscribers, and, you know, they basically do all of those breakdowns. They break down like every television show. They break down the movies. You know, they do those ending explains, you know, 300 Easter eggs. You know, they do that kind of stuff. So they have a lot of people following them. And notice what he says. He says, I'm dumbfounded at the low Loki breakdown views on all the YouTube channels. Why do you guys think views are low? Are people not watching or do they just not want to watch a breakdown? Yeah, and that's a good question, you know. He's noticing it, and I'm also noticing, like, there's not a whole lot of people buzzing about this particular show. Even these breakdown views are kind of on the low end, right? And he didn't say he was surprised. He says, I'm dumbfounded. He's like, he is just blown away with how low Loki's breakdown views are. People watching this on all kind of various channels, not just his, on others. Yeah, because you can see he's asking questions. Are people just not watching? <laughs> you know, he's talking about Loki, right? Are people just not watching Loki? Or do they just not want to watch a breakdown? And, you know, especially with a show like Loki that has a whole lot of complicated plot points, I'm pretty sure people want to go and just watch those breakdowns to kind of figure out, okay, what, what, what happened? You know, or at least to confirm what they think they saw, what they think the show was about, what they think this character's motivation is. That's what's, you know, really good about a lot of those breakdowns. It's to kind of, you know, okay, I think I'm watching this the correct way. Let me go and check this guy out. I follow his, okay, yeah, I'm on the same page with him. Like that kind of thing, right? Yeah, so everybody's trying to figure this thing out. Now, we got some answers, of course. Here's Valiant Renegade. Look, and I've already said this before. If you are not watching Valiant Renegade, if you are not subscribed to Valiant Renegade, okay you're wrong all right go check this guy's channel out all right he gives a lot of great information i always feel a lot smarter after watching a valiant renegade video that's just me okay i feel a lot smarter and i feel like i'm a smart guy but i always feel this a little bit smarter after watching valiant renegade so if you're smart okay you'll go and you'll subscribe to his channel i'll actually leave a link in the description for that uh, but he says nobody is watching or cares about the show as the entire MCU has basically collapsed in the commercial markets. Yeah, he's 100% right. Let me get out of heart. He's 100% right. Marvel is not what it used to be, all right? The MCU has fallen to complete trash. Let's take a look real quick at just what the MCU has done in terms of television. All right, so what we're looking at here is the MCU on Disney+, Plus, right? MCU on Disney+, Plus, and, and it's not the movies, obviously, okay? It's not the movies. It's not those uh, holiday specials, Werewolf by Night or the Guardians Christmas special, all right? Strictly the television series, the episodic TV series, all right? I want you to notice something, all right? Start it off solid, right? WandaVision uh, in, in 2021, Loki as well. All right, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, not so much, all right? But then after that, right? After that, let's get to like 2022, all right? Since March of 2022, the last year and a half, all right? What has Marvel been giving us on Disney Plus? They gave us Moon Knight, they gave us Miss Marvel, <laughs> they gave us She-Hulk, that god-awful monstrosity, and then they gave us Secret Invasion. Do you understand why people might not be buzzing, all right, about the MCU on Disney Plus? This thing has been an absolute train wreck for about the last year and a half. 
There's nothing that people that the buzz is down. People are like, oh, um, this is what Marvel produces. These four right here were the precursors to uh, Loki. I wanted to call it Loki. I almost call it Loki. Uh, Loki season two. And yeah, that's where it's at. So I'm questioning how much people are actually going to be looking forward to Loki season two just based on its four predecessors. Yes, yeah, you got to wonder. And another thing to consider is the viewership, right? Because you know Samba TV, Samba TV does a really good job, you know, measuring out how many people are viewing a particular uh, show. In this regards, they're looking at Marvel shows, and it's always within like the first five days. Like how many people viewed uh, various TV programs within the first five days? Uh, you can see Loki, 2.5 million. Nobody else has even come close. All right, even the shows after this, I know it like kind of caps it at Moon Knight, but nothing else after that even came close to this 2.5 million all right so yeah 2.5 million in the first five days 2.5 million households i should say is still the record but notice this isn't just with television programs uh because yeah you see ms marvel 775k it didn't even hit a million and then you got uh dr strange right a feature film all right dr strange in the multiverse of madness it only reached 2.1 million households within the first five days now think about that for a minute then you got the Eternals, right? Eternals, only 2 million households watched Eternals. Again, another feature film within the first five days. And then another feature film, this time Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, a film that most people liked, all right? 1.3 million households over the first five days on Disney+. Plus. You're starting to see a pattern, folks, all right? It's the downward trajectory of MCU content, period, all right? Nobody's checking for this stuff. And then finally, the last piece of MCU content, right, before Loki comes out, not even a million, all right? 994,000 U.S. households watched Secret Invasion over its first five days on Disney+. Plus. So yeah, that makes Valiant Renegade's statement ring true. Nobody's watching. Nobody cares, all right? The MCU is going like this. It's going like this, and it's continuing to go like that. So it'll be interesting to see what Loki uh, season two does over its first five days. We're going to find out in about a couple of days. All right. Because Samba TV over the first five days, it came out on Thursday. So you're talking about Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So maybe Monday or Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, depends on how long it takes Samba TV to calculate those totals. All right. We're going to see what Loki season two has done within its first five days. You got Matt Kate is salty nerd. I don't think many people know the show premiered. Yeah, I wouldn't be doubt. I wouldn't doubt that at all. This guy says, yeah, sounds about right. Uh, Ultra Maximus reviews, Marvel and Star Wars has been on the decline with bad shows. No one is watching. I watch more Aquarium videos than <laughs> those shows lately. Man, this guy's watching Aquarium videos. He could care less. Steven Prince, I didn't know it started. Yeah, that's a lot of people, okay? A lot of people didn't even know it was coming out. Again, that's talking about the buzz, the hype, the energy. We remember this with Bando Season 3. It was like hardly anybody talking about it. It just, and it was being advertised. It's not like the stars weren't allowed to go out there because that was in March, right? I can maybe make that argument with Loki. Oh, the stars haven't been able to go out there and promote and push it or whatever. But it was the same thing with Mando season three. Nobody was talking about it. You know, so you have to start to wonder, you know, again, it's the buzz, the online chatter, people just being generally hyped for it. All right. I guarantee you when House of the Dragon season two comes out, oh, I bear, you better believe there's going to be major chatter going on online. People are going to be talking about it on the lead up probably a couple of weeks ahead of that. But also with the way writing these shows go, I'd almost wait until there are four or five episodes out and binge them. I'm so conditioned at this point where it seems like only one to two episodes a season actually matter or give me new information. Yeah, like when you have these little condensed six episode seasons, it's like I can wait a month and a half and then just binge watch it. Why do I have to show up on day one? Oh, if I'm hyped for the show, I'll show up for day one. But if it's just, all right, it's just some more MCU content that they just throwing on this, on the Disney Plus, man, I catch it somewhere down the line. That's, I guarantee you, that's the way a lot of people are thinking. I had no idea it started. Yeah, they did nearly zero advertising. Nobody knew about it. And even if they did the advertising, because listen, I heard about the advertising. I saw stuff popping up here and there, but it was like nobody really cared. This guy, Dan Peters, no one cares anymore. No one cares enough to even hate it. Damn. <laughs> it's run its course. Look, I wouldn't say that nobody cares enough to even hate it, but I mean, it's it's a nothing burger. At this point, the MCU feels like a giant nothing burger. All right. It's just it's just another piece of MCU content that's out there on Disney Plus. If I catch it, I catch it. If I don't, I don't. 
And I'll be honest, I probably won't remember that episode two is even out uh, until I watch some YouTuber talking about, hey, here's my episode two breakdown. It's like, oh shit, I forgot to watch. All right, let me go in there and log in and go. You know, like that's what it's going to be. I did not realize it came out until after and haven't watched it yet. Yeah, so this guy, even though he realized it's out, yeah, he down. Nah, I'm not going to watch it. This guy, people are done with Marvel. It's too much to keep up with, and the quality of the sum of the movies isn't there. Yeah, the quality is just dropped off the side of a cliff, all right? Yeah, you got this from Hector Navarro. The interest is shockingly low. I think audiences are fatigued to franchise movies. Low quality plus never-ending stories are tiring. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, feels like homework without payoff. 100%, man. 100%, he's right, all right? It's these franchises, okay? Look at all the franchise box office bombs that we've seen. These blockbuster box office bombs just this year. All right. Remember uh, what Ant-Man and the Wasp? All right. Fast X. Okay. Fast X spending 300 plus million dollars on these joints. Bomb. All right. What else did we see? We had uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Big flop. Big box office bomb. Even Mission Impossible. All right. And I liked Mission Impossible. I thought Mission Impossible was amazing. All right. Yeah, but it bombed, all right? Because people are kind of tired of the franchise, all right? It's like fast food. Like, people are getting tired of fast food. They want some quality, man. Give me some real food. Don't give me this fast food crap, all right? DC, all the DC movies flopped, all right? The franchise films are old, but what didn't flop? Think about what didn't flop. Super Mario Brothers, all right? Super Mario Brothers didn't flop. Barbie didn't flop, all right? And even though those are like necessarily, those are our franchises, right? Those aren't necessarily small franchises, but they haven't been given that Hollywood treatment. We haven't seen them just splattered all over Hollywood for the last decade. You know, and people are like, man, I'm kind of tired of these. Can we go somewhere else? Can we do something different? You know, and that's kind of where it, at, it is right now. I think, I think he's 100% right. People are tired of the franchise stuff. And again, you know, Oppenheimer, you know, something new. People want to get new stuff. They're kind of tired of the same old, same old fast food. I need something quality. I need some good food. I got to pay 18, 20 bucks for a movie ticket. All right. You guys are raising the prices. You're going up and up and up on these uh, streaming platforms. Yeah, I'm going to need some quality, fellas. Y'all ain't going to be able to get away with this crap. All right. We're tired of it. But anyway, folks, what do y'all think about this? I think uh, all of these guys are absolutely correct. All right. You know, talking about, yeah, uh, people are done, bro. Shame because it was a fire episode. I thought it was a decent episode. I didn't hate the episode. It's okay. All right. It's nothing great. But at the same time, he's right. People are done. People are done with the MCU. People are done with these giant franchises. Uh, I don't know. In my opinion, Marvel should have did something different. They should have said, you know what? We're going hard into the X-Men. We're going hard into the Fantastic Four. I would have pushed pause on all of these like Avenger type characters. And these guys like, you know what? Slide those guys to the side. Let them have about a five, seven year rest. Somewhere between five and seven years. Let them just rest. We are going to go hot and heavy with the M or with the uh, X-Men content, with Fantastic Four. I said that way back then as soon as endgame was up i said i would have jumped right into fantastic four now that we got it in our hot hands that's the next thing that i would be trying to push fantastic four i would have tried to push x-men now that we've got it i would have did our own content gave like the avengers stuff a rest and built that stuff up and then you know seven years later you know you bring back okay let's get back into the avengers stuff i think it would have been a lot better because this is just the same old same old this feels dull this feels boring you know but we'll see what happens we'll be i'll be interested to see what those samba numbers look like when they finally drop for loki for the first five days but you guys let me know what you think jump down in the comments give me your thoughts and opinions on that thanks for watching see you next time